Very good morning to you. Friday the 20th of November and here is my view in 60 seconds. Good morning to you. Uh, New Zealand's second America's Cup boat hits the water today and even just sitting on it, clinging to it and, and going full tit would be like nothing us land lovers have ever experienced before. I think we would be mm, ourselves. It's thrill seeking. It's dangerous and it's ours. So be careful. But whack the wine on the bow, okay? And let's, let's get sailing. Our sailors are good, very good. And not just that, and in brave as well. It takes massive courage, I think, to do what they do. Although I don't think it's courageous to call our Freedom Campus and say you're not welcome here and, you know, call them silly names and things like that. Stu Nash has callously puts it, they shit in our waterways. And we're better off to just focus on high net worth tourists like the rich ones. Really, Stu? The other half of the remaining businesses here will also be forced to shut doors as well because we just let the rich elite guys in. It sounds snobby, Stu. It sounds elitist, Stu. I would have thought the first and only message is you welcome all people to please come to New Zealand and spend their money. We're excited and waiting for their return. Not some coded message that they're smelly and hairy and leave their droppings all over the country, Stu. Come on, Stu, whatever to kind and welcoming, you can do better, Stu. On your cell, tablet, TV, radio, car radio, computer, heck, even your watch, it's the AM Show. Certainly is good morning. The hype is starting to feel real. It's real. It's here. Emirates Team New Zealand has revealed their new boat, the AC75, which looks to be all about aerodynamics. Man, this thing must fly. Joining us now is Emirates Team New Zealand sailor, uh, Blair Chute. Good Blair. Nice to see morning. you. Welcome you? back. You've been here before. Familiar territory. Yeah, good to be back. Yeah, nice. No, what's it like? What's this boat? I mean, I, I've, we've seen it, obviously, in, in, in passing, but tell us about it. Yeah, well, the first boat was really good, and we had the, the test boat there, the the 12-metre um, boat as well, but yeah, this one's a, another step on the learnings from both those boats and another couple of years of design, so I'm uh, really looking forward to getting out there today. I, I'm just amazed at how you keep tweaking these things. You know, you think, this, this is really modern in 2014, and suddenly something else comes along. Now we've got the 2020, late 2020 version of this thing. What's changed between this one and the one you had a few months ago? Or can't you say? No, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things. I mean, it's quite a different look. So, you know, if you put the boat one and that next to each other, it's, it is very different. But, uh, you know, just more refinement, the uh, underside for the hydrodynamics, more refined. And then, obviously, the for when it's flying, the aerodynamics is, is pushed on a long way. So just When it's flying? Yeah, that's pretty where, much where it should be most of the time. So, obviously, you need to get out of the water and, and get up on the foils. But then from there, it's all about the aerodynamics. Has it been difficult to learn how to sail it? Obviously, this has been the way that sailing's been going for a while, more foiling, you know, the boats in Bermuda were, were pretty hard to sail too, but this has been a big step on. Yeah. But, you know, we've enjoyed it. It's, it's challenging. But, yeah, the, the boats are fast now. They, they really are pushing the how, upper how, limits. How, how fast do, do they go, for, for instance? If, if you're driving a car, so if most New Zealanders know what a car is, yeah. kilometres per hour. How many kilometres per hour, let's say? Mid to late 90s, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but it's probably the upwind speed, which is... Phen phenomenal, you know, you're doing uh, sort of mid 30s to close to high 30s upwind, uh, so that's you know, into the breeze, poke your head out of the car, you, you'll know all about that. How long, yeah, how long will the race last? I mean, uh, the race will be about 25 minutes long, so depending on the wind strength, there'll be you know, two, three, four laps of, of race course, and uh, you know, that's going to be miss it. nice, nice and close and in, in by North Head there, so it's going to be good. So, we'll get a real, we'll get really a bird's eye view of, of how fast these things are going from sitting you know, with a nice little beer on the side of, side of North Head, basically. Yeah, that's the, that's the idea. That's what we've always believed in right from the start to bring it as close as we can to the public so that if you, you know, you can't get out in a boat, that you can still watch it and we can showcase, you know, where these boats have got to. And, you know, it's going to be a great so thing for, yeah. for Auckland and the Hauraki. Wow. Blair, any word from your competitors? Were they there last night? Have they been checking it out? And out of all of them, who's your biggest threat for next year? Well, they were all there last night. They were sort of in some of them in chase boats and some in cameras just off. Uh, off the side, but you know that's all part of it. They want to see where, where we've got to, but you know we're, we're it's been interesting to see all them launch their boats. The three challenges now they've all taken big steps on from their first boats, uh, which is you know as you'd expect. You know that's are they all similar though? I mean, they, surely they're all within some sort of design set, aren't they? Yes, exactly. There's a there's a rule, but you, there's differences within that rule, and you can exploit them where you are. So some are better for when they're in the water, some are better for aerodynamics, and you know we're hoping that or we're pretty confident where we're at at the moment, but not complacent either. There's a heck of a lot of hard work over the next four months. The combination of having a good boat and then being able to sail it, because I, I heard sort of anecdotal evidence that you know when uh, Dean Barker went went what, seven up or whatever on on America. But they always had the better boat, and it was just a case of actually learning to sail it. I mean, what what is the combo between being able to sail your boat versus is your boat better than the others? 
Yeah, it's a good point. This America's Cup's all about developing the the fastest boat, and that's a um, sort of combined effort from everyone in the team, design team, engineers, sailing team, to get to that point, and then I guess it lands on us to sail it at, at the end. But you want to keep pushing the boats hard, so for the most part, the, the faster the boat is, the harder it is to sail normally, so we've pushed it pretty hard on this. It's going to take us a little bit to to learn how to, to sail it, but you know we'll make sure over the next few months we just eat every last bit of speed out of it. So we've got a winner. Basically, that's all we want to know, if we've got a winner in the water. We've, we're in a good spot at the moment. We're confident where we've where we've got to, but you know not, not complacent at the same time. We've got a heck of a lot of hard work. What, um, <coughs> have you experienced anything go wrong at 90-odd k's an hour on the water? Yeah, we've had some pretty... Yeah, you pulled a handbrake or something at 90 k's, what does it feel like? Pretty close, yeah. You don't want to, we've hit the water at some high speed, you know, in the boat one just before we stopped sailing, actually. And what, and what actually happened? Uh, just quite a lot of whiplash and stuff, but not too bad. The boats are, you know, we're pretty happy, and you've seen our cockpits now. We're, we're quite tucked away, so you're away from the, the water. It's but motor racing in many ways, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're pushing the limits, but, yeah, it's fun. That's what you're... I'm not really worried about you guys. It's, yeah. it's me I'm concerned. I fish out where you guys practice with your boats, and I see a lot it's of boats reach. charging around out <laughs> here going your breakneck speed, and, and there's pleasure crafts at the moment out there. I mean, are people getting in the way? Uh, not really. We've got pretty good comms, obviously, uh, between our boat and the chase boat, So you know, and we've got good visual where we're going. So we're pretty, you know, it's not too hard for us. So And if boats are going... 15 or 20 knots, you know, what might be fast in the speedboat because we're going so much faster. All the decisions are really on um, with us there, and you can kind of miss You think Mark would know the rules as well because you're under sail and he's got a motor, a jet engine. You, you, he, he, he has to use his power. You have to get you. You basically have the right of way. Blair, you are the priority. Don't ever yeah. miss no, If I'm onto that. a decent snapper. I'm not getting out of the way for you guys. That's all right. We'll miss you. We're, we're, yeah, 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 you Just can. a question for you. For next year, well, you know when the Prada race is underway, what can Team New Zealand do at that time? What are you allowed to do? Yeah, so we'll have our first sort of test against the, the challenges at the Christmas Cup and the, or the World Series event just before Christmas time, which is going to be you know, our first chance to line up, which we're excited about. And then as they shift into the Challenger Series in January, then we're sort of back by ourselves again so obviously we're watching that closely but then pushing hard for ourselves so we'll you know we'll get some time to um be out on the race course still but that we won't really know until we line up again on march 6th there's been sorry, sorry don't oh, you go Amanda. i was gonna say there's been a bit of controversy and stuff at the moment it's been a lot of negative headlines and stuff how does that impact you and team morale yeah it's a, it's a good question i think you know we're pretty resilient team so obviously you know it's hard not to you know see that stuff but the distractions around the the team are just that distract uh, and we just sort of see them as noise and you just kind of get on with your with your business so I wouldn't say it's affected the team at all and you know see the boat where it's got to now we're pretty proud of it and you know the sailing team itching to get hold of it now and get into it when when you look at the other teams and I don't, I don't know enough about them but how, how many Kiwis are on these other other teams and is it really a celebration of how brilliant New Zealand sailors and, and, and crew and, and designers really are because they're all also involved in so many of the other crews or is it not that not the case it's a mix. It's definitely, obviously, Dean Barker with um, the, the Americans, and then there's some Kiwis scattered across the other teams, but probably not as, as many as in, in the past. Right. Um, and that old Butterworth was hanging around too. He, he tried to yeah. make life a bit difficult there. Was he yesterday? Was he prying around yesterday having a look? Yeah, he would have been there somewhere, but that's all part of it for the challenges, you know, and to Amanda's point, everyone tries to distract us where they can, but that's part of the America's Cup, and you just get on with the job. It's not really that yeah. big of a deal. Well, all the very best. We're really proud of you, and uh, right up behind you, so... Um, yeah, I was going to say, bring the cup home. Keep it home. Yeah, Keep that's it home. the plan. Yeah, Thanks good, for having good me. Good stuff, mate. Well done. Thank Emirates, you. Team New Zealand sailor, uh, Blair Chu. Well done already in advance. Uh, we are 18.